Call the meeting to order. This is the August 22nd, 2022 meeting of the East Long Meadow School Committee. Call the meeting to order 602. This meeting is being both audio and video taped this evening. I would ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> okay, um, we'll start with a roll call this evening. We can start with our new member if you want to tell us who you are, and uh, we'll go from there. Hi, Amy Delenta. Elizabeth Marcin Boucher. Gregory Thompson. I'm Gordon Smith, Superintendent of Schools. Sarah Trulio. Pamela Blair, Assistant Superintendent for Business. Oh, Samantha, the secretary here. Okay, thank you all. Um, so we have a large crowd tonight. We have some minutes to approve, but I'd like a motion to move up uh, number four, opportunity for visitors to address the committee. Uh, we have some folks here tonight that would like to um, to address the committee. So if we could. Uh, yep, some of it I'd like to move opportunity for visitors to address the committee to our first um, agenda item. Motion made by Beth. Second. Second by Sarah, discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, Antonella. She said aye. Did you uh, introduce yourself? No. No. Sorry. <laughs> Antonella Rochilla is our other member. She's uh, home. We would like to uh, formally congratulate her on her uh, new son, two weeks old. Um, her her and, uh, and your husband, Andrew. Um, everything going well? Yes. Antonella? yes. Everything's great. <laughs> Good. Francesco? Yes. Handsome boy. Tell him what his uncle Greg says hello. <laughs> well. Thank you. Okay, with that, um, we have an opportunity for visitors to address the committee. Uh, I would just like to say you have up to three minutes to speak if you like. If we start getting redundant, just kind of keep that in, in, uh, in perspective, but we're here to listen. It's not necessarily an answer, a question and answer session, but uh, again, uh, you know, this is a time for anyone who wishes to speak. Uh, they need to give their name and address. Do so. Yeah, if you could, when you come up, uh, have a seat at the chair and uh, just your name and address, if you could, please. And if I could add, your your comments will be brought to the whole building committee. Okay. Yep. Who would like to start? Brad Dodd, Dave Schmidt, uh, 66 Norton Street. Um, and uh, we, the. So you're going to have a seat. Oh, yeah. yeah. I figured three minutes, it's not gonna. <laughs> um, so um, a petition went around the neighborhood and I believe it was submitted to the committee. Um, it was actually submitted to the design team and the school building committee. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to make sure that um, there was some visibility over that petition. Sure. Um, Absolutely. We would like to limit the vehicle traffic um, in the neighborhood behind the high school. Um, we know that several of the new high school development plans call for um, teacher parking and bus routing and other vehicular access by the back of the high school. Um, at least one of the proposals calls for just a walking path from back there. Um, but the amount of traffic that's back there now with the extremely small parking area that's back there between football practices and, and baseball practices and everything. Um, and then just the general school use during the day. Um, we are constantly watching our kids like hawks in the front because people fly up and down that road with the limited parking. If we were to expand the parking and access, it would just make things so much worse for the neighborhood. Um, so our request is that we limit and basically eliminate vehicle traffic back here. Um, with the new design. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Surprised, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> my name is Colin Temple. I live at 8 Sutton Street. My backyard backs into the lacrosse soccer fields. Um, Susan Street, Marshall Street is bad enough. That's like a speedway. Then you get Norton and Bari, and they have become pass-throughs. When that happens, Susan Street becomes a pass-through. 
people are going around 35, 40 or higher miles an hour. And this is not just young people. These are staff of the high school, people dropping off their children for games or schools or whatever it may be. We are a very established neighborhood, um, all ages, some elderly, some older, like myself. Many young families have come in with numerous children. A lot of people are walking from the entire neighborhood, not just Barry, Susan, and Norton, but their dogs, themselves, whatever. And many times I'm hearing and doing myself yelling at somebody driving to put an access road either up Barry or up Norton and not eliminate Norton is only going to increase the risk of disaster. It's also going to diminish the value of our homes, which is one of the reasons why we bought where we bought, one of few of the main reasons of why we bought. And that is, again, a quiet, established neighborhood, one that kids can play baseball out in the street without worry of somebody just flying down and not seeing anything. So again, we request that that possibility be completely taken off the table. You already have a major access off of Maple, and we did already speak about an access from Chestnut. Um, something else has to be done. This will not be acceptable or even tolerated by the neighborhood. So I ask that consideration be done. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, Anthony Gorno, uh, we're at 60 Norton Street, uh, which is your main access to the back parking lot right now as it stands. And uh, just to reiterate what everybody else has said, you know, I have, I'm a father of four under seven, seven, five, three, and one. And by the time things are going to be developed, uh, my children are still at risk. Uh, I can't trust them right now to be on the front yard. Thankfully, I do have a backyard, but I would like, if possible, to, to feel a sense of safety. You know, they open doors, they do things that you don't want them to do. I mean, certainly it's going to be a great um, upgrade to what we have. We're excited about their future education. I'm a teacher in Springfield, and I know how important that is to us but more importantly first and foremost is the safety of everybody just not the kids all of us i've seen we saw a dog get run over three four years ago right around the main uh, the bend at the top of the hill I'm not sure if the dogs survived the last thing i think any of us want here is something like that to be a human life you know and i've seen it in the parking lot since you know in in the, in the school district where I work. So, you know, it, it's it's just something if we can if we can find a way around uh, making what is a, is a problem now worse, that would be very beneficial to us. And peace of mind is worth a lot as a father. So thank you for anything you can do for us because it is a concern. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm Steve Castingway. I have been uh, a resident of East Long Meadow for 49 years. Uh, I'm a former teacher for 35 years. So I'm close to the issues at hand. Um, most of my notes and comments are coming from a meeting I think you folks had on June 27th, you know, wherein you had six different proposals about uh, the new school or addition. The first two had to do with renovations and then adding to that a new, a large new portion. Uh, the last four had to do essentially a standalone new building with a destruction of the old building. Uh, I'm here to argue for uh, item number four, a uh, new construction, uh, which fronts toward Maple Street and is I think the only proposal where the school is kind of in the middle of a garden since it's kind of enclosed and embracing arms by all the fields which are uh, some of which are portions of, of which are there now but uh, some will be have to be moved a bit but there uh, are a couple of things that make sense 
uh, it eliminates uh, that proposal item number four eliminates the Norden connection. And when I first saw the paper, I was concerned, if not alarmed. So on and off during the day, I went into the committee to actually see the footage of the proposals being made. And most people seem to be <clears throat> very much in a positive mood and looking for the best outcome. Uh, they're not here to get us. So I don't know if anyone had that feeling, but that's not true. So it eliminates the Norton connection and it also represents the best solar connection or orientation. Uh, we have solar in our house and it's been beneficial, it's been prosperous. As a matter of fact, we make money off of it. And I didn't see enough of the program or enough of the previous programs on whether or not solar was going to be incorporated with the new school, but I would highly recommend that that be a proposal. Uh, not going backward into fossil fuels, but rather using the existing building as a solar generator. And in order to do that, I also hope, and I, I don't know if it's true because I haven't seen plans yet because I think we're just looking at footprints at this point. But I hope the roofs will all be pitched. We have flat roofs on this building. We had them in Minnichaga where I taught for many years. And I was a student at Minnichaga in 1961 when we first moved in. And in the first year that we were there, that roof leaked. And it leaked not continuously, but continually on for as long as we were there. So if anything, uh, let's get the solar up there, but let's put it on a pitched roof that will have a right orientation to the sun and save us a lot of money with time uh, to go in that. So we're eliminating the Norton connection. We're adding the solar uh, and uh, we can use uh, part of the Norton connection if we just cut it down a bit to make sure that traffic doesn't get in there, but as a bike path and a walking path to get to the high school. And when the fireworks are gonna happen, I don't know how that'll work out with all of these changes, but if they still work out and uh, we will need some kind of access, although there are a lot of people who think even last minute they're gonna get preferred parking. Back <laughs> <at the house. laughs> Needless to say, to their dismay. I've seen it for 49 years and you see them circling the block yep. and wasting their time and they've only heard noise and that's what they see. So, so that'd be it. So I, I think it's the best option. I think it'll calm all of our fears. We have a lot of uh, family art. We have grandkids, but they're older now too. But, but for the young people uh, who have families, um, my thought was when I first saw this is that the committee was gonna route all the traffic from Maple and Chestnut into the Norton entrance. Talk about a nightmare, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's where my imagination was going. Right. So you're gonna take all these people from the north side and the south side and then try to squeeze them into Norton somehow and get them into that parcel, you know, and leave all the other roads undisturbed. But uh, we're a small neighborhood, but uh, we, need, uh, we need the help of, uh, you know, you folks in making sure that uh, it'll be a safe neighborhood for everybody too. And again, with the few suggestions I made, if you could pass those along. Absolutely. Or if it would be better for me to write those up and send them along. And certainly um, welcome to do that as well, but yeah. we've taken notes here. Oh, and, that's great. And a yeah. few of us are on the building committee as well. So, oh, well, okay. yeah, yeah, yep. Oh, that would be great. Okay. And uh, that's all we need to say. I, I don't think this is a big issue. Uh, I think we can get it and get a new school and be fun to be in. Mm -hmm. Would be. Yeah, well, yeah, it will be fun. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Just for those who can't see, there's probably 50 people here uh, for those not, not able to see, um, just to show community support for this. There's a gentleman. Yep, okay. Tom, you can yep. certainly come on up. Oh, who's coming? My name is Louis Calabrese. I live at 198 Maple Street here in East Lombardo. In 1965, I purchased a home on the corner of Marshall and Barry Road. Uh, raised five kids there and i have to say that uh, unfortunately this rear access to the high school which was originally put in just for deliveries has been a major nuisance okay and while i was living there we were told so many times that they would improve it it was never improved there are no solutions for it now and there should be no solutions even thought of the new high school should be 
access squarely but from Maple Street. There's no real need to bring traffic into a small neighborhood like this. It's ridiculous. If there were a need, they wouldn't think, but there is no need. Maple Street is the main thoroughfare. So we don't handle any traffic. So there should be no thoughts or even plans to put anything back here. Nothing. So I hope that you'll consider this. I have spoken to some of the committee people that were at the uh, um, National Night Out. Well, the thing at the high school a few weeks ago. And uh, I mean, you've got time to do what's the right thing to do. The right thing to do is not to have any access whatsoever. Like I said, I dealt with it for many years and it was a real problem. So please talk to this building committee and tell them that they can build a nice school with all kinds of nice, great things there. Pitch roofs, whatever you want to do, okay? But don't bring it in this residential neighborhood. There's no need for it. And it doesn't make any sense. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Calamries. I'm Tanner Williams. I live on 39 Marshall Street. Yeah. Tanner, how are you? Uh, I actually work at Longmeadow High School, and when we put in the new high school, it changed the parking structure from when I went to high school to now. And I can tell you, <laughs> you can ask anybody there, it's been kind of a nightmare. Um, less entrances are worse, and entrances towards residential neighborhoods are worse. It is, they had problems. There was a, a woman killed on one of the streets in Longmeadow because they had increase in traffic in that road and because somebody was flying down and before they put in speed bumps somebody was hit um, and you're talking about putting an entrance where there are 100 kids 100 kids in that neighborhood and it's bad enough that people come flying down there cutting through from chestnut to maple and blowing through that stop sign but at least they it's like at night when nobody's around but you're going to increase traffic there with a number of high school kids driving their cars in, and now you're taking several entrances that you already have for East Long Meadow and now putting one of them, a major one, in a neighborhood where there are lots of kids. So kids that are walking to there, kids that are walking to other schools, kids that are busing, but kids that are outside playing as well, especially when you start including after school events and people coming back for football games coming back for whatever now you're coming in at four five six o'clock when kids are home and playing and then over the summer you have the same issue people going in for other activities during the summer summer school when the majority of kids may not be doing those activities and now you're putting those kids at risk when i don't think it's necessary thank you thank you anybody else yep sure I'm James Goldrick, uh, 93 Barry Road. I'm a firefighter paramedic here in town. Um, I've been to motor vehicle accidents with small children. It's not fun. Uh, I don't believe it's, it's, it's not if it'll happen, it's when. Um, I see most states and towns, uh, they're more reactive. It happens and then they fix it. So I think I would just urge everybody to be more proactive in this. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I may, I'd like to say one more Please. thing. Please. Yep. It's very quick. I yep. don't need to say. Okay. I'm a parent of a child at the age of 14 who was hit by a car and suffered a traumatic, traumatic brain injury, of which at the age of 44, we are still dealing with the repercussions of that. Okay? And it's getting worse as she ages. Her brain was separated almost two inches and she took over a thousand stitches in, a in her face. This is again by traffic that is not being monitored or speed limits looked at and therefore again this is a very close issue to me because I'm going to have my daughter and the responsibility of her the rest of my life because of someone's negligence and not looking into the future of what can happen if you don't make the right decisions at the right time. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Anyone else this evening <clears throat> like to speak? I think yep. we have someone who's... Yep. call her in first. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, 
I'm Joshua Sand from Five Marshall Street. Um, yeah, Palm Patrol. Um, and I'm right on the corner of Marshall and Maple, which is an awful corner. I think everybody can attest to. Um, and <laughs> I can't remember if it was last summer or the summer before we did. I'm sure if you've driven around town, you've seen the white signs that say, please slow down with the red writing. Yeah. Me and my father did that. Um, we handed out over 250 signs to East Long Meadow. We did some of Long Meadow. I delivered some out to Hamden, Wolverham, <coughs> parts of Springfield too. And um, it helped a little bit, but especially that bottom part of Maple is ridiculous. Like I've watched people pass each other on double yellow lines and stuff. And so to put more traffic in to try to get to the high school is going to completely obliterate our whole neighborhood there. Like I grew up in that house. My father grew up in that house. I mean, I've, I'm 34. I've been there for 34 years and I want my daughter to grow up there and I want my son to grow up there. He's coming in November and I don't want to have to feel like we can't enjoy our backyard because there's so much traffic coming around. And it's already, I've, I have emails, I have paper trails of talking to the East Lama police about it. I've gone down there. I've talked to the safety officer. I've talked to everybody. And we get a cruiser to sit down there for about five minutes. And then he takes off because everybody slows down, obviously, you know. But if you funnel more traffic into there, like, it's, it's going to be terrible. Um, if, if anybody parks on the street or anything in front of their house, like, it's all going to, it's going to get all bottlenecked and it's not, it's, it's not going to work. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys' time. I think you're listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, come on, you. <laughs> <laughs> Say bye. 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 <laughs> Anyone else like to speak? <laughs> Anyone else would like to speak this evening? No? Okay. So certainly we will take all the information. As I said, many of us are on the building committee. We have a meeting Thursday uh, that will be recorded on LCAT, at least, so you can watch our discussion. Um, as previous speakers mentioned, there are multiple options on the table, one being to keep the existing building, you know, a new addition, a new building, but certainly parking and traffic are, will be a priority to us in new, certainly. Um, I can commit to you now that we have no intention of increasing traffic. We have no intention of adding student traffic or student parking to the back. Um, so that I can tell you that now, the rest of the design, I don't know, but certainly with all your input, if we could help alleviate that, I think, you know, we're, we're four or five, six years from a, a project completion anyway, we should maybe work with the police department to start to address some of the issues. I don't know if it's speed bumps or more uh, crews. I don't know what it is, but I think it's an issue that we should tackle now and they can help us with input on, on how to do. Um, but, but certainly, you know, we're not gonna make that a main entrance by any means, no more increased traffic we understand your concerns. I would have them too if I was in the same neighborhood. Um, so if I may, the design, thank you for coming tonight. And uh, yeah, in the study, the design team is also doing a traffic study so that they can look at not only traffic through the neighborhood, but traffic on Maple, traffic on Chestnut, all of the above. There was so, so that we can hopefully put together the most effective result. When are they doing that study? <clears throat> so the so during the summer. I'm sorry. When school is not in session, the traffic is completely different. Sure. Correct. Um, so the feasibility study, the what we're in right now, which the building committee is um, part of, really it started um, what, last September. Yeah. We and it's been. going through and probably will finalize a, about a year from now. So it's a long process and we're at the very preliminary stage. However, one of the big decisions on Thursday is to uh, build, have the building committee tell the um, design team what are the options they want to thoroughly study in the rest of this feasibility study. And so the, the different options that um, people have mentioned tonight, those have been discussed over three, four building committee meetings. Maybe they stay as six, seven options, maybe it gets narrowed. You have to put forward at least three, one of which um, has to be um, code upgrade, one of which has to be an addition renovation. Then you get into the whole new building scenarios. How are they monitoring the traffic now? Do you know? 
In terms of police monitoring? monitoring? It, whoever is doing the monitoring in our neighborhood. Like the traffic, yeah. like the traffic Who's count. Doing, how are they doing that now? Do you know? That hasn't happened yet. Yeah, that, the study hasn't happened yet. But we can make sure it's during the yeah. school year. Yeah, we, right. it would, yeah. it's going to happen as we go forward. But seriously, like we moved into the neighborhood only three years ago, or mm -hmm. November will be three years, and our then two-year-old, his like hobby for a while was sitting at the window with his sippy cup of milk and literally counting the cars that did not stop right. through our stop sign. Yeah. They like even <clears throat> really recently when I went to go cross the street to get our bus paperwork mm. that actually put my five year old in the intersection. Um, when I went to go get that paperwork, I was almost hit by a car. Yeah. And so it's it's an issue now. Mm. So if we Whoever's doing that traffic reporting, if they could mediate even issues in the meantime, that would be great because it, it's seriously an issue. Right. And we can share that information with Chief Williams. I think we yeah, should I talk think that's more with of a the police, police monitoring. Yeah. Yeah. To bring up with him, there is a sign back there currently sure. that says no parking after 6 p.m. In the neighborhood? Nobody's following yeah. that. Okay. Um, the back in the back. Back. Yes. Oh, in the back. Signs on both I see. Sides. Yep. They're not be back there after 6 o'clock. Right. People are back there. Parking in the fire lane, parking on the right. town. Yeah. There's like, so many cars back there. I don't know if you get any ambulance if something happens. Like right now. It's a van. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like what we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's what I'm saying. We, we should yeah, address that even before. Yeah. Okay. It's bad, guys. No, we appreciate you coming. And this this shows there's a there's certainly a, a concern. A little concern. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but come again. We love company anytime. <laughs> well, I'm sure. Yes. It's been very thank lonely you. the last couple yeah. of years. Thank you. I'm sorry. Will any of the building committee meetings be in the east? Uh, some have been later. This one was moved a little bit earlier because we know it's going to probably go three plus hours. <laughs> so that's why I got moved to two o'clock. Um, most of them have been around three thirty or four, but I can certainly make a recommendation that we even move it further. Why didn't you want folks to come for Correct. For the community events. Yep. No, I here. Okay. Yep. It makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Yeah, so right. 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 Is there any reason why the meeting on Thursday at two o'clock can't be at a time when all these people who are still working can come? <laughs> right, right. No, it's a great question. Someone just actually asked it. We'll set up another meeting that is a better time. This one we have to do because we have things we have to get done by a certain time, but. No decisions are being made. So if we want to do a later one, we will go. Yes. Yeah. We'll be here. Everybody wants to come. Yeah, we will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Have a good night. Good night. Okay. When we do the community outreach at the senior center September twenty first, that would be a good meeting to yeah, invite good point. To. Yep. I don't know if we could get that out to the petitioner and they could spread it out. Yeah, but maybe that would be okay. tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, that was good. Uh, good input. Good discussion. I appreciate everyone's um, information tonight. Okay, we're going to go back to order. So we have number two, which is an approval of minutes. I'm looking for 2.1, please. To approve the regular session meeting minutes from June 21st, 2022. Okay, motion has been made by Sarah. I'll second it. Second by Beth. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. That motion carries five to zero. She said aye. Okay. Okay. 2.2, please. Move to approve the regular session meeting minutes from June 28th, 2022. Motion made by Sarah. I'll second. Second by Beth. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. That motion carries five to zero. And one more, please. Move to approve. The executive session and regular session meeting minutes from July 12th, 2022. Excellent. Motion made by Sarah. I'll second. Second by Beth. Any discussion? I think I have to abstain from the executive. Beth. Okay. And um, I have been having discussions with Sam over the minutes. Sam, thank you for your efforts on them. And, you know, made a few changes that folks may notice. If anyone else has some changes that they'd like to um to suggest uh, you know in the next couple of weeks okay um 
please do so. Okay. okay. All right. Great. I, I, my point was to keep them brief. Certainly have the motions uh, reflected, some of the comments of the of the committee, but to just tighten it up a little bit um, to make it more readable. Okay. Good. Excellent. Thank you, everybody, on that. Up next, we have number three: committee and subcommittee communications. Here we go there. I just realized I voted. I have to abstain on the June twenty eighth. 2.2 agenda item because I wasn't here. It's like I know I wasn't here for one of them. Okay, so the vote on 2.2 would be four in favor, one, uh, zero opposed, and one abstention. Right. Sam? And then did we vote on 2.3? No. So all those in favor of uh, Sarah's motion to approve uh, July 12th. Well, you, you weren't there. But I was here. I just checked. Sorry. Okay, so fine. Sarah's made the motion. Sorry. That's seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. That carries five to zero. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, we have committee and subcommittee communications. Antonella, would you like to start us out? I don't have anything right now. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. We'll go to Sarah next then. Um, sure. I, it was great. Um, I saw Beth at National a couple weeks ago, and it was really nice to see uh, members of the community there. And there was a tent from the building um, committee that um, members and residents of East Summit were frequenting, and it was just a really nice event and, a, again, a wonderful use of our high school grounds. So it was a pleasure to be there. Excellent. Thank you. Beth. Uh, not much other than um, I hope the kids have a good year coming back and the teachers are ready. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I think it'll be a good year. So hopefully it'll be like as normal as normal can be. <clears throat> I wish. <laughs> That's right. Amy, anything this evening? No? Okay. Lord. Okay, we'll move forward then. We have uh, opportunity visitors we already did. We'll move on to presentations. We have approval of education plan for the MSBA feasibility study for the East Long Meadow High School. Okay, um, some of the uh, introductions of what the building committee is going to be doing on Thursday, you heard. Uh, but on Thursday, the building committee is reviewing not only the, uh, the options, uh, potential options for further study. Um, as the feasibility study continues, but also going through all the information for what they call the preliminary design program report. And in that report, there's um, an educational plan, which you had in your packets. And basically what it's asking us to do is take a look at what are our current practices, instructional practices, instructional focus and goals how do we implement those specifically in this case at the high school and then how would we like to see that in the future grow and expand um, and how might spaces architectural spaces impact that or allow that to happen in a more beneficial way so what we've done throughout and like anything else with um, the mass school building authority there is somewhat of a template so it's not it's not just um sort of free verse writing. Uh, it's, it's very structured. And hopefully we've captured what we do. A lot of what the high school is doing obviously is very reflective of what the district's doing and then it becomes specific in its implementation at the high school and where we hope to go. And much of that is um, come from the professional development that we've discussed with all of you over the last few years. And um, what we continue to do with our, our SMART goals and our action plans. Um, so hopefully you all had a chance to read it and um, give some input and thoughts uh, in terms of if you have any thoughts or revisions, we can certainly add those. And then ultimately, once you endorse it with any amendments, we bring it to the school building committee as part of the whole um, preliminary design program. <laughs> Thoughts from the committee. I appreciate that there are there's evidence of the work that we've been working towards over the past few years as it pertains to collaborative spaces, not only for students but for um, educators, and that there's um, just a real through line from the work that we've been doing over time around smart goals and curriculum purchases and how moves that are being presented within this document are creating spaces that allow that work to happen. So it's not diverging from the work that we've been back on. 
So thank you for that. That's the ideal. <laughs> I mean, we still have to get there. <laughs> I think this does a pretty good job, though, of, of sort of it, putting everything together and, and showing it on paper as opposed to lots of thoughts were going around in those meetings and right. things like that. This hopefully captured a lot of what we discussed in the visioning sessions and then made it a little clearer as to where we've been, where we are, and hopefully where we're going. Okay, anybody else? So we're looking tonight for an approval of, uh, Gordon, so we call it the educational plan on the uh, uh, agenda, but it's the program on the title. Which would you, would, what are we approving? Um, if the design folks are calling it the educational program, I guess that's uh, what we should call it. Okay, so if they had referred to it for the entire writing as the uh, educational plan, but um, it changed it uh, to. That's program. the actual title of it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I'll put it on the Google, like on the footnote or the header. That's what they call the document. Yeah, because that's me. Kyle. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was MSBA also. I it was MSBA. <laughs> All right. I need to approve the educate the East Long Meadow High School educational program for the MSBA fees appeal Because it's for the fees appeal. Excellent. Yeah, that's what yep. it's for. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Beth. Motion made by Beth. Seconded by I'll second it. Hey, second by Amy. <laughs> Any discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. That motion carries five to zero. Thank you very much. Pass that on. Yeah. Okay, Gordon, you have an update for us for the preparations of school. Yeah, so we're uh, we're now less than a week out from welcoming back uh, our staff. And uh, we're excited uh, next week to also welcome back, obviously, our students. Um, a ton of work has gone into, and there still will be a ton of work this week, has gone into uh, preparing the buildings. I, I can't say enough about our custodial staff because they have to work in and around um, summer activities and our summer programming. And last few years, our summer programming has expanded. And that programming in many cases goes right up until August 11th. So they get very antsy and um, hide it well, for the most part. <laughs> and uh, but uh, then really have to kick into overdrive starting August 12th. And uh, so they're, they're doing exceptional an exceptional job. If you start to walk the buildings, you can see floors gleaming and um, rooms ready to go. Um, one interesting fact as I was getting ready just to give you all an update, um, starting in the last school year, the 21-22 school year going through this summer, we've had 72 personnel transitions of sorts. That's not all hiring, that could be transfers, that could be um, just uh, simple changes or leaves, but um, 72, I think that's, uh, close to the record, at least in yeah. my tenure uh -huh. as superintendent. And so that's, a, and a lot of those, as Samantha knows, have happened in the last two weeks. Yeah. Um, and those have been hirings. So we've had a lot of hiring this summer. So um, to that point, Gordon, if I could just interrupt, sure. there's a big, you know, around across the country, a shortage in educational staff. How are we suited here in East Little? So we're, uh, we are in good shape and we will be ready to open. Um, we have, not filled all our positions, but we'll be ready to open. Um, and we'll continue to um, go through the hiring processes to make sure that we fill those remaining positions. But absolutely, we've had to become creative. We've had to, um, in some cases, um, put things on a back burner if it's not gonna be a frontline individual. And so that hiring process may take place after the school year begins. Um, but yeah, we're, I would say paraprofessionals have been the most challenging to fill right now. We've had a lot of people exit um, and uh, we uh, continue to seek to fill those spots, um, see people to fill those spots. So I think a lot of our staff also, I, I've noticed that like as, as far as my, my daughter's concerned, there was staff that would have retired a year or two ago, but they stuck it out with us. And I will give them all the kudos in the world for sticking it out the last couple of years, because I know 
I would be gone. So, and I do, and I'm sure that that now they're tired and they're done, and they're moving on. I'm sure you get. And we did, we did have some of that, and there is a there's a shortage, a uh, staffing shortage across the country, mm -hmm. as Mr. Thompson has uh, stated. Um, but we'll be ready, and uh, I think our staff is exceptional, second to none. So um, I know they'll be ready to go, and we're excited. Our students will be ready. Um, although we weren't talking specifically about opening day, you know, if you could see that uh, some of the children who will be attending school uh, and the parents uh, that they're excited about it opening. Maybe that's just because they've been all summer with their with their children. <laughs> but, uh, so we're excited for that. A couple big uh, dates coming up: convocation on Monday, August uh, 29th. So 8:30 the program begins. Eight o'clock though, we do have um, breakfast treats and uh, you know just. Connecting with each other, our um, committee members may be able to attend. I am no? No? sadly going to be at my own convocation okay. elsewhere. Yeah. I'd rather be here. Yeah. Great, it's that person. Yep. You're I great. will let you know. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Antonella, well, you'll be home with. I'll be home. <laughs> yep. You watch it live or tape. Yeah, yeah. yeah tape. Yeah. Sorry, Don. <laughs> 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 uh, okay. Thank you. Then the, the day after convocation day is um, our new uh, staff professional development and work day, which is the 30th. And then our first day for students is August 31st. And that's actually uh, grades one through 12. Kindergarten starts a little bit later and preschool starts a little bit later. Um, and we'll, we have information out to folks regarding kindergarten and pre-K. So, yeah, it's exciting. We'll be ready. Um, it's been an interesting summer, but uh, a very productive one. Can I ask um, one more question yeah, um, relative to busing? I know last year there was the number of bus drivers we had and the number of buses that we had. I'm going to give an update. Transportation Perfect. update coming. I'm excited. Positive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we have, we're, we're ready to go. Uh, but we're not dissimilar to districts across the country that uh, staffing is a challenge. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for that update. Sure. We will move along. We have some transfers from fiscal 22. Two. So in your packet um, are the FY22 end of year transfers that I always bring forward at the end of the year. Mr. Smith and I met on June 29th with the finance sub committee to review the end of year transfers that are in front of you. The transfers occur every year at the end um, of the year. The policy um, must be officially approved by the school committee. So it's typically um, the larger transfers. Of course, we always have transfers every year. The last two years, three years, nothing has been really normal. We don't typically have this high of transfers, um, and that's due to the additional uh, grant funding and just the, the not normal expenditures, I, I think, in the school district. So I just need official approval from the school committee, please. Okay, I move to approve the FY 2022 um, transfers. Um, end of year. For end of year transfers. Sorry. I'll second it. Okay, uh, discussion. So you understand what she does? She just takes mm -hmm. whatever, okay. Yep, makes it's sense once, to me. Once yeah, a year, like end of the year before the books are closed. And then the finance subcommittee is the chair and the vice chair. Okay. And then superintendent is just the superintendent. Yeah. And they do this, but they bring it back to us after. Okay. Understood. Uh, and they have okay. to do it by the 30th. Uh, motion's been made and seconded. Any other questions? Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. That motion carries five to zero. Thank you, Pam. You're welcome. Thank you. Yep. Continue on here. Okay. Yep. So this is your uh, FY 2022 fourth quarter financial uh, report. And this is as of June 30th. Uh, the town closed the books on July 27th this year, which was a little bit earlier than it was last year. So that enabled me to do things a little bit earlier as well. So um, I always give you a little bit of a blurb here on, on the accounts. Um, I guess I'm saying this for Amy's sake as the new um, person here. But I've, if you go to page five, these are where the numbers are. So I'll go right, right to that section. Um, this is the operating budget right here. And on the top section are your salary accounts. 
um, which now at this point that it comes forward to you, all those transfers that you just approved have already been in place here. So you'll see there are not a whole lot um, of available balances here. On the salary side, you'll see there was 98,553 overall um, left on the salary side, which that's just so folks know, that's out of $26 million. So that's not a whole lot there. Uh, the bottom section of the um, spreadsheet is your expense side of the operational budget. And again, you're going to see, you know, small balances here um, in some of the line items. Again, this is after those transfers. So on the expense side, it, uh, the available is 72854 so if that you go right down to the very bottom there, just to remind folks, our budget last year was 32,066,537. We expended 31,146,137. We encumbered 594,778. And as of the June 30th date, $171,408 was remaining. I just want to remind you um, that as in with all departments in the town, any available uh, funds return back to the town's general fund. So this is, does anyone have any um, questions on the operational budget? So that's the amount we turn back to. That's correct, 171,408. Okay. So that always helps um, the town and mm -hmm. we're pleased that we could do that. Um, Okay, and the next page on page six are your grants at the top section and your revolving accounts on the bottom. Um, the grants, you know, I list out the federal grants. There's not too many there um, with balances, but what I do want to highlight is that we have the ESSER II grant that was rolled over, and I think I had told you back in June that I anticipated probably about 250, mm -hmm. and this is 267,000 that's rolling over. So we have until September 30th of 2023 for that grant. I do anticipate this is going to be gone within the, the next, you know, five to six months. Yeah, that, but maybe even the quarter. The quarter yeah. Yes. Um, the other one that I just want to bring to your attention is um, you're going to see that ESSER 3. That's a very large one um, that we talked about, the $2 million there. That goes through September 30th of 2024. So that we've had many discussions about being very strategic with that. We don't know what's what's down the road for this year, for next year. So um, that entire grant is, is rolled over and we have not touched that at all yet and won't until ESSER uh, 2 has been um, completely expanded. <clears throat> Uh, we go to the state grants, and again, you're not going to see very many balances there. I just want to remind you that we, um, towards the end of the year, received that foundation reserve grant from um, the state. That's $139,000. That is still there for us to, um, to plan accordingly um, and strategize on how best to use those funds okay um, for this fiscal year i believe they have to be expended this fiscal year the next set of grants are your private grants um, not very much um, rolling over there those are just the project lead the way and the 18 foundation um, just the amounts that will be expended this year um, are there any specific questions you have on the grants at all anyone no okay. so the bottom section is the revolving accounts um, I always list these in the same order, um, Amy, so you'll get used to seeing these. The athletic revolving account that has a nice balance of 44664 so I'm very pleased with that. The athletic stadium rental, um, we have 29710 rolling over into next year. I want to remind folks that uh, the school committee had allocated 28000 for um, helping the community preservation with um, a, a funds that they did for resurfacing the track and the school committee voted to to spend 28,000 from this account here because we get this this revenue from um, uh, places that rent the, the stadium so it makes perfect sense. Um, I believe about $20,000 was expended over the summer, so it's after this point. So when I do my first quarter for you guys, you're going to see that that, that comes down from like 29000 down to like 9000 somewhere around there, um, because there were expenses, but they were after the June 30th date, okay, to finish up that $28,000. Uh, then we have the school rental accounts, uh, which are and, and other miscellaneous accounts, and that totals 144,407. We have the student mobile technology insurance account that stays at right now. We're rolling over. Um, excuse me. 
48,664, which um, has pretty much kind of remained, uh, it was, it's been a, about 45, 50,000, because of course it's kind of top heavy. It, this was a new program because of COVID, because of, you know, technology. And so the longer the kids have the, um, the devices, they're gonna start, you know, things happening to them. So it's been a very successful program and um, I'm pleased to see that balance. The staff uh, mobile technology repairs, that's 3,646. Same, same idea as the student uh, mobile technology and that too has been a successful program. Uh, the gift accounts, that includes eLeaf in here. That's a total of 46,882 that's rolling over into next year. Um, the next account, tuition revolving. These revenues come from um, two different sources. It's the preschool peer tuition that we talked about. Um, and, you know, we have increased that to a full day or there's a half day also, but, you know, the, the amounts have increased for this year. So um, you'll see that revenue um, continue. The other um, place that we can bring in tuitions is uh, special ed tuitions. Other districts um, may pay us for their student to attend one of our programs, which is really quite um, a compliment when you think about that, that we've had. So uh, as an example, we had a student from uh, Ludlow for the last few years. That student is actually come done. So I don't believe we have any student you know, currently, but that can always change. Um, so that's another way that revenue comes into that line. And so that rolls over at uh, 215,816. We talked about um, that line item just as, as a reminder back in June when we were talking about preschool and um, this might be another revenue source to help us get through because we had a lot of changes with preschool, you know, um, additional little ones registering and um, circuit breaker is the next line. Uh, circuit breaker, I think I gave you a blurb on that there. Um, the way that that works is we can take we take in the revenue and we can roll over one year's worth of circuit breaker revenue. And I believe I put in your little blurb there that um, I think it was nine hundred. Maybe I better put my glasses on for you. Uh, nine hundred and sixty-seven thousand um, dollars we brought in last year, so we needed to at least expend that amount the prior year, does that make sense? So then last year we needed to expend at least 967. We're rolling over 855,000 this year, which is great. Mm -hmm. So we need to expend at least that amount next year. This, this year, I was forget like where am I? This year, next year. Um, does that make sense with the circuit breaker? Yeah, so we use 20% more than we actually took in this year. Is that gonna be an issue next year? I don't believe it's going to, but we do have a new um, director of student services and we are analyzing all of the tuitions right now. And he and I are gonna, and Mr. Smith will be meeting, you know, within the next week or two. So certainly if I see anything that's alarming or concerning, I will certainly bring that to your attention. I still think that we're, I still, think with that we're okay. We also have IDEA grant, um, which the application is just going in for that. For that. That's about $800,000, you know, um, some, somewhere around that. The bulk of that goes to tuitions as well. Um, then we have the circuit breaker, you know, it's a million dollars and um, it's always a, a, a place that we can go to if, if we need those funds. Because as you all know, the last, we do not want to have to go back to town council. Um, so certainly I'm going to look at that and I'll let you all know if there's any concerns. Okay. Um, next one, transportation revolving. So we're finally starting to get back to normal, sem semi-normal, typically um, in the past prior to the pandemic, we would bring in about 130,000 or so dollars for um, uh, the fee that we charge, which is the 270 and of course not everybody has to pay a fee for different reasons, whether it's mileage or just other uh, other things. Um, so this year we brought in 88,901, but that revenue was really for this fiscal year because we collected that in June. Does that make sense? So most of that money is, yes, exactly. Um, and then it continued, um, but we did try to tighten up those uh, deadlines for registrations. And uh, thank you everyone out there because it really made a difference this year um, and just getting things expedited and, and bus passes out and all of that. So um, that worked out really well. And so we're rolling over 88,901 into FY23. Um, school lunch, I'm really pleased. This is the first time in three years that she's got such you know a, a high balance um, of 442,345, um, which you know she needs to have at a minimum. We talked about that. I put it in your little blurb there. I think it's about 12, 
uh, yeah, 12 weeks of operating costs, which is about 240,000 minimum that she should have in there just to cover expenses. So the sheer fact that she's back at like the 400,000 is just a really good, really good thing. Um, you know, we, uh, the district um, helped food service this last year, the last few years, the cost of food has been a, a, just crazy, um, you know, with, with just everything we had to do. So I'm very pleased um, that we're rolling over that amount. Hey, how do we have that in receipts for FY22, that much? Because the- We're charging lunch. Because there's still reimbursement coming from- That's reimbursement. Yes, that's, the, that's okay. just yeah. reimbursement. Perfect. And they put out their you know, new rates, which I- was gonna ask, did they increase it? They, they did. Um, yes, let me see. What are they saying here? Uh, reimbursement rates. I want to give you the correct amount, so I apologize. So it's like um, there's a state share, a federal sh federal share. The the total for a paid lunch is like 0.825 cents. Uh, reduced price lunch three dollars nine eight five. A free lunch four point three eight five. Which is why it's so important. That everyone out there is going to get the free and reduced um, applications. So. I'm going to talk about that in a minute, so I guess maybe I should just wait on that one, if you don't mind, because I'm going to go into that and the next thing. Thank you. Um, so the last line is choice, and uh, we are rolling over $209,690, um, which is uh, really terrific. This was our, was this our second year, second year. Yep. for school choice for this district for a very long time. So, you know, that's something that the school committee uh, chooses and, and votes on every single year. But once those uh, students have already been accepted, they continue through our district as long as they would like. So. Did we fill most of this box this year? We filled um, all of the slots at sixth grade. And um, I think we have two openings. Initially, we had filled all the slots at fourth grade. But we had two people um, decide to withdraw. So we have two slots open. We don't currently have a wait list, although I think we had one phone call last week. Am I correct? Yep, okay. correct. Um, so we're hoping to, you know, we'll pull off the wait list, or if there are families that are interested in the fourth grade slots, we'll certainly, uh, they apply, we can take them in. Okay, great. So that is the financial report. Thank you, Pam. Any yeah. other questions? Thank you. With that, I would entertain a motion to accept the FY22 financial report, please. I move to accept the FY22 fourth quarter financial report. Should I say as of June 30th? Uh, sure. Okay, yep. as of June 30th, 2022. Excellent. Thank you, Beth. Motion made by Beth. Second. Second by Sarah. Discussion? None. All favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Motion carries by zero. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Trace. Yeah. So uh, the next one is the transportation, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I just want to make sure I had a lot of things tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so the good news is we have a new uh, manager over at the LPVEC bus yard. Her name is Lori Sleeper. We just met her today. So uh, we're very, very excited about that. Um, Welcome to her. And there's a new uh, supervisor over there at the LPV LPVEC bus yard, Angel Oliveris. And we're excited. We have not met him yet. He'll be coming over soon. Um, we are very, very excited for this next year. Um, we have 1,200, as of last week, we had 1,241 riders registered for this year. Of course, that's a combination of paid and free for those different reasons. Um, just to let everyone know, I know Mr. Smith talked about um, all of the new staffing. Well, just in the last week, there were 20 new registrations came in to the district. Um, so uh, we're still weeding through those to see who needs uh, busing as well. So there's some of those folks and there was an additional like 15 late bus registrations, which we're going to do our best to try to get you on a bus um, before the start of the year. Um, we will do the best we can for you. So um, yeah, we're things things are, are looking good for transportation where the bus passes went out the most of them any of these late ones will be going out after you know soon. Um, people should have received them if they have any questions they should be uh, reaching out to LPVEC bus yard or certainly here to central office we're always um, you know wanting to, to help in that area so. Do you have any questions. I did mention that um, 
staffing for drivers. They have oh, all thank their you. main drivers filled. Nice. Uh, and they're working on what they try to do is they try to have backup drivers um, or spares as they call them. And uh, they're working to fill those roles as well. So and since those positions are filled, have they have they been able to do any trial runs? We just asked that question today okay. and they're they're going to be doing them later this, this right. week. Because I know that was a concern that we heard right. um, very loudly from the community last right. year. And, right. And and there is always there is always a little bit of a learning curve every year. I just want to remind everyone to just be patient with us. Um, we are hoping it's going to be, you know, better than than last year. And um, certainly again, give us a call if there's something going on that we, you know, should should know about or try to rectify for you. So and they know that we don't want the littles crossing the street as unless it's absolutely necessary. They do. Okay. All right. Yes. So that's your transportation update. And thank you, Gorna, for reminding me sure. about the driver's signing news. Yes. Um, I know I didn't have to pay for it this year. She drive <laughs> <laughs> so much so, for that insurance, you know. I wanted to give a, a little update on school lunch um, because a decision was finally made at the state level. Um, we didn't seriously know until about 10 days ago that it is going to be um, free lunch for all students. So just as a reminder, that will be one free lunch. Some tykes try to go and get more than one. One free lunch <laughs> per student per day. Um, Lori Paul, our food service director, does have a nice letter that she wrote up and put on our website. So if folks want additional information, um, you can go there and, and read all about that and other things um, for food service. Um, I wanted to remind people, as I started to allude to earlier, the free and reduced applications are going to go home in the backpacks um, that first you know, week of school. And it is important for folks to, to get those back if you feel that you would qualify. Um, Although it's free and reduced lunch, I know it kind of seems silly, but there are other benefits that can come to you. So if that's something that would be um, beneficial for you, you should please do that. Um, I wanted to let folks know that our first half day this year is September 27th, I believe, and we will be doing half day lunches. Each school is working with Lori Paul right now to come up with the process for that school. So uh, stay tuned for that. But but. Be ready that there is going to be um, school lunch offered on those half days. That would be a grab and go. We're still uh, we're still working that out. It, technically, um, we still it may be a different packaging so yep. that you can move it, but it won't be just dismiss and with the lunch um, that we'll, we're going to have to build in some time. Whether that be back to the classroom or how that's going to work, that's what each the way yeah the way the rules are. Um, they made it very clear to all food service directors that. Um, if, if a student needs lunch, they need to have time and a space to eat that. So, again, she's working with each yeah. principal. One, and one of the models that we could look at because it's worked out really successfully is our breakfast program at Maple Shade, because that's a uh, it's a it's a working breakfast. Some people take advantage of it, others don't. But all the um, the the process and the structure is there, and it's worked out really well. And that may be something that we can use for half day lunch. We'll see. So stay tuned. You'll hear more about that. Yeah, please let us know. Okay, yeah. and uh, the last thing I wanted to let people know is there are some. Um, uh, she she said schools will be gearing up for recycling, composting, reducing food waste, and she could use parent volunteers. So if anybody's out there that wants to help with that, uh, she's working with the town um, health department on that. Um, so it's, it's a new initiative and we certainly are always looking to partner with the town and um, certainly always looking to recycle. So uh, you'll see this happening uh, September, October. It might take us a little bit to get in the swing of things, um, but you'll see that happening in the schools. So that's the update on the school lunch. Is the, I'm sorry, is the reimbursement rate gonna be the same that the oh. federal government gives from the mass? Like, is, is Massachusetts going to give the same amount of reimbursement money to us as the federal government did? Or is she going to have to play games with what she's allowed to spend because it's not as much? Or? I don't know all the detail on that. I think Lori would be better to answer that. No, she needs help. Well, like, you know. Always. No, I, clearly with, with her balance where yeah. things are, are much, much better. But okay. we've made it very clear that with the ESSER funding, that's what it's for. If we need to, right. to help, I mean, you know, because so depending on um, she has some new vendors this year uh, for both her paper goods as well as the food brand new vendor. So 
Last time, I don't know if you recall, but I think it was last year, she had a brand new vendor as well, who then like backed out like the week before school. So I, I sure hope I'm not coming back telling you guys that, but um, which just, again, causes different challenges that you just don't even think about, you know, and, and now uh, do prices go up? And so we'll stay tuned on that, but um, certainly if you want any additional information, I can, you know, ask Lori that for you. Yeah. Okay. And are we anticipating just along those lines with yep. food services, students returning to the cafeterias in our buildings this year? Yes, absolutely. The, the only change would be those half days where we have to figure out okay. what that structure looks like. Yeah, I remember we had a lot of conversation last year because it's kind of mind boggling when you think about it at the at Meadowbrook, those little tykes had never been in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. So when, although, you know, the kids were back without the mask and the rules were changing, the thought of trying to get them to, it, it takes it takes like a month to teach them how to do that realistically. So it just didn't work out last year. Mm -hmm. So I know the um, administration over there is really excited to, to get that um, up and going this year. So that's great. Routines are back. Yeah, routines are back. So thank you. And the last item I have, if you want me to just roll right into it, is the um, approval of the e-leaf grants. Um, I always like to list off every single one for you because I think this is great that our that our staff, you know, apply for these grants. And it's certainly we are so thankful to e-leaf for their support. Um, so the first grant, they're not in any specific order. Um, Amy Pelzek, she received $4,625 for Meeting Owl Pro 360 communication tool. Second one is Hannah Baruby, Adaptive and Assistive Resources for Music Curriculum, $690.53. Sarah Scabelli, Promethean 4K 86-inch Active Panel, $7,220.81. Robin Clifford, 24 mini unit iPads with cases, $12,528. Christopher Tyler, VEX Robotics, $4,998. Eileen Turnberg, VEX Robotics, $2,466.52. Aaron Sosnowski, four cellos, four violins for no cost rentals for students in need, $4,672. <clears throat> Last one, Beth Meehan, Breathe for Change, 200-hour wellness, SEL, and yoga teacher training, $1,875. The grand total for the E-Leaf grants, the highest it has been at least since I've been here, I don't know prior, I think this is the highest, $39,075.86. So again, thank you, E-Leaf. It's really spectacular. All of the grants are set up. I emailed all of the individuals along with the principals, as long as this, and along with the secretary, so everybody knows like they're up and going. They can start expending the funds as soon as the school committee approves it tonight. Great. So do they like it at the time they're getting it now at the beginning of the year? You yes, I, up think, I think it's better. I really do. I think it's a better system. Yeah. Um, that's my opinion, yeah. Okay, with that, I'd entertain a motion to accept. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Sorry. All right. I move to accept the um, $39,075.86 uh, grant uh, from the East Long Meadow Education Endowment Fund. I think that's right. Motion has been made by Beth. Second. Second by, seconded by Sarah. Discussion. Just say thank you yeah. to yeah. the E-Leaf and then thank you to also the educators who yeah. continue to push their practice forward and find alternative ways of funding it. Yes, so congratulations to all of them. Yeah. And I know E-Leaf's been for years, like when I was on it, they were just pushing to get to that point, pushing to get to that point so that you do all this work, you do this so your kids like age out of the system, they age out of this and they're doing the work and, and the fact that they're doing the work now and their kids are going to see stuff and all the kids are going to see stuff from, so I know that's huge for them. We were able to hit that donation point, given all the obstacles yep. to fundraising over the last few years. Yeah. It's really a testament yeah. to how hard they work to support our schools. So, yeah. Okay. All those in favor of accepting the leave grants, please say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, nay. That motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Blair. 
And uh, finally, this evening, we are looking for a nominee for the school committee representative for the paraprofessionals negotiations. Gordon, do you have right. um, something on that? Just that uh, para our paraprofessional unit is the unit that's up for negotiations this year. I know that uh, they're actually eager to get into those negotiations a little bit faster than maybe we've done in years past. Um, so if we have someone today who's nominated uh, and will work with that group with us, um, we'll get those going after the start of the school year. Excellent. Do you want to try that? Sure. They're very nice. Yeah. Yeah, don't All our groups are very nice. They are very nice, but they are, you get there and you're like, because like I'm a pair, so you know, I just like want to give them everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Amy, interested? Yeah. In, uh, Absolutely. Excellent. Great. All right. So. Cool. So I'll take a nomination then, please, from someone. All right. I will nominate Amy Delenta to be the um, the representative to negotiate with Unit E, mm -hmm. the ELPS. Paraprofessionals. Excellent. Thank you, Beth. Motion made by Beth. Second. Second by Sarah. Discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. That motion carries five to zero. Amy, Thank you're you. not left on your own. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah, <laughs> no. please. Cool. Oh. I've been there as well. Yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. It's kind we'll of reach fun. Reach out to the paraprofessionals, and actually, they negotiate um, with the assistance of, of our teachers' union. So we'll reach out to them, and we'll. Once school starts, and then we'll have some preparation for all of us. So, Great. yeah. Thank you. Has the union picked officers yet? The, the, uh, the teachers union. Teachers, yes. So our uh, so this is just sort of an aside, but a good uh, informational. Uh, Chris Norden and Abby Steiner uh, are co-presidents for the ELEA this year, and um, I think uh, so far it's been going really well. Two exceptional uh, professionals. And, and we're looking forward to working with them. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Amy, for volunteering for that. And uh, if we have no other business, we will have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion has been made by Sarah to adjourn. Seconded by yeah. Amy. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. That motion carries five to zero. I thank you all for your time this evening. Antonella, have fun with that baby there. <laughs> thank you for joining us tonight, Antonella. Bye. Uh, Mr. Mackey, thank you so much for your time tonight. Okay, and good evening. Thank you. Thank you.